hope you're all well. So I wanted to talk to you about shadow text today. So Design Space has a number of pre-made shadow texts available in Design Space. Now you won't be able to do this with your uploaded fonts. You do have to go around it a different way. But there are some great preloaded shadow texts. So if we go to text and we go to font and we go to filter and we click multi-layer, you'll see we've got a whole range of multi-layered fonts and some are part of access and some are paid. So I want to play with two types today. One is going to be a bold type and one is going to be a cursive type. So I'm just going to go and pick the first one out now. So I've picked out Varsity and if you look in our layers panel you'll see there's a hidden layer. So if I unclick my eye you'll then see that my shadow layer comes up and if I then highlight both of these and ungroup them I'm able to play with my shadow layer, I'm able to change the way it looks, I may want a bigger layer, I may want a smaller layer. I can play with it as much as I like and then I'll be able to cut them out as two separate fonts and I can layer them on top of each other and that's a great way of having a pre-made shadow layer in design space. So now I've got the chalkboard font and this is a cursive font so we have to go about this slightly different. You'll see that we've got our shadow layer but if I go advance and ungroup to letters and I then try and move them, which I can, when I weld my letters, they're then going to become one. So I'm going to lose that shadow layer. So you need to do it in sections. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to undo and I'm then going to hide my shadow layers and I'm going to move my letters so that they are all overlapping to get that lovely cursive font that we want. But before I weld them, I want to highlight and I want to duplicate them. And when I duplicate them, I'll still have my shadow layer. Now my shadow layers are still on this one, but you'll see when I weld my letters, I completely lose them. So I've got the same image here and all I need to do is go through and remove my top layer and just have my shadow layer showing. I can then go in and highlight all and I can weld them. So I've then got my top layer and my shadow layer. They're both connected, they're both welded. I can then grab my top layer, arrange to front and I can then place it over my shadow layer. And again, I'm then able to cut both of those and layer them on top of each other. So there's several ways in which you can do it with your uploaded fonts in Design Space. Now there are external programs you can use such as Inkspace, but we're just going to look at Design Space today. So I'm going to go in and I'm just going to grab a text and we're on Arial so we'll just go with that because it's a system font. And my style is on regular so I'm going to type in my words and then I just want to make them slightly bigger and I'm then going to duplicate that now with the duplicate I'm going to change the style to bold and I'm then going to go in and change the colour I can then arrange these to front and I'm then able to place it over now you'll see it doesn't quite do it so we need to go to advanced and ungroup to letters. Now you do have to play around when you're doing it like this. It doesn't always work so you may find that you need to adjust things manually and you will have to, as I say, have a play. But you can make it look really effective and it's just one way in which you can do it. As I say, I find it very very hit and miss but there's some fonts it works really well with 
and then there's others that it doesn't work at all with and then there's some like this one where you're really going to have to play with it to get that effect that you want but it is an option so the next text I've got is Bobbers and this is from defont.com. I'm going to change my style back to regular and I'm just going to type my text in. And you can see that it's a cursive font so I'm going to go to advanced and ungroup to letters and I can then start overlapping my letters to get that lovely cursive effect. And then once I'm happy, I can then highlight and I can weld those. So I'm then going to highlight and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to change the colour just to a pink. And then I'm going to change it to print. So it's going to do it as a print. Now my printer is not attached at the moment and it doesn't need to be. So we're going to go to make it. And you'll see it's come up as a print and cut so we're going to go to continue and I'm going to send to printer now you'll see we've got our bleed option now I normally have my bleed off but for this we're going to want the bleed on and the other thing I then need to do is click my mouse and I'm going to save picture as and this will then save my picture for me if I then go to upload and upload image, browse, I can then bring my image into design space. Now I'm going to save it as a complex image because this will just keep everything as it is and I'm going to go to continue. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove all my white and I'm then going to zoom in and I'm just going to remove some of these central parts that I can see clearly and then I'm going to get my eraser and I'm just going to lower it slightly and I'm then going to go in and erase this box all the way around and it's just easier than clicking on it several times it would just get rid of all the kind of layers of that line and I'm then going to go to continue and I'm going to save it as a cut image. I'm then able to insert it into my canvas and you'll see it comes up this way round. I'm just going to turn it round so that it's the right way round and I'm also just going to change the colour on it as well just a lilac and I can then get rid of this pink one because we don't need that anymore and I'm then going to size it up and I can then get my top layer arranged to move to front and I can then bring it over and again I can then size it up and work out how I want my shadow layer to be. So this is just a nice easy way of being able to do it. Now it doesn't always work like this as with all things it can be hit and miss but it's worth trying especially if you don't know external programs or you're not that used to other external programs there are ways of getting around it in design space and these are just some of the ways in which you can create a shadow text in design space as always I hope this tutorial has been informative please do subscribe and leave any questions and I'll see you all again soon.